Hiya. MacGyver. Anderson taught us that heroes can win with a pocket knife. From the minute he took on the role of MacGyver, he charmed audiences with his brilliant problem-solving abilities and unrelenting tenacity. Derek, you have got the talent. You've got the speed. You've got the instinct. You know that. You don't have to bang heads to win. But beyond fiction, Anderson's portrayal of MacGyver embodied a timeless truth. Tenacity, imagination, and resilience are the qualities of a hero, both on and off screen. Join us as we delve into the incredible life of Richard Dean Anderson, a man who redefined heroism and left an unforgettable imprint on the hearts of millions. Early Life Anderson was born on January 23, 1950 in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and his ancestry is as diverse as his roles, with strands of English, German, Swedish, Norwegian, Scottish, and maybe Mohawk ancestry intertwined. The Anderson surname honors his paternal grandfather's Finnish-Swedish lineage, linking him to a broad and diverse background as varied as the terrain he would later explore. Richard Dean Anderson, the eldest of the four sons, grew up in Roseville, Minnesota, where his mom, Jocelyn Ray Anderson, was an artist, and his father, Stuart J. Anderson, was an educator. Consequently, he received both a creative and intellectual upbringing. But the path to stardom was not paved with flowers for him. Anderson, as soon as he started studying at Alexander Ramsey High School, wanted to become a professional hockey player and go on ice with skates. However, fate played a mischievous trick on him, sending his sporting dreams crashing when, as part of the school hockey team, he suffered recurring arm fractures. Despite this setback, Hockey Hall of Famer Stan Mikita praised Anderson as a hockey nut and a damn good hockey player. Despite the abrupt end of his sports ambitions, Anderson's interests swiftly found new channels for expression. He immersed himself in acting, music, and art, briefly pursuing a jazz career before opting to focus on the dramatic theater. His rise to stardom began in the hallowed halls of St. Cloud State University. It continued at Ohio University, where he honed his acting abilities while seeking an acting degree. However, the pull of adventure was too powerful, and Anderson soon found himself cycling from the Midwest of Minnesota to the wilds of Alaska with numerous pals. In this background of travel and introspection, Anderson's restlessness led him to the bustling streets of North Hollywood with a romantic partner and friend. His path led him eastward to the throbbing metropolis of New York City, eventually arriving in the sun-drenched embrace of Los Angeles. Adopting the spirit of the City of Angels, Anderson pursued a variety of roles and vocations, each more diverse than the last. Anderson's job was wide-ranging as an amusement park comprising an array of shows. He leaned his musical skills into the fantastic world of medieval dinner theater, where troubadours sang for knights and jesters frolicked in maniacal dances. At street performances, which saw him master the art of juggling and mime and mesmerize people with his exalted grace and magical acts, Anderson suggests, typically, that this period was something extraordinary that gave him all the happiness and contentment in the world. Every day he spent on the streets doing all sorts of performances inspired him to go beyond being a mere entertainer and convey his passion to people who were worse off than he was. Anderson even hoped to create a place where possibly bored children could benefit from doing circus juggling, clowning, and other circus skills that were in some way inspired by him. Struggle to Stardom Richard Anderson's ascent from the shores of soap opera drama to the dizzying heights of primetime television is a monument to his versatility and brilliance. His debut on the screen came in 1975 with The Birthday Party, a short film commissioned by the Marine Reserve Public Affairs Unit to honor the bicentennial anniversary of the United States Marine Corps. Yet, it was his performance of Dr. Jeff Weber on the legendary daytime soap General Hospital that launched him into the national spotlight. From 1976 until 1981, Anderson enthralled viewers as Dr. Jeff Weber, entangling himself in a web of convoluted plots that highlighted his emotional versatility. In his character, he experienced a roller coaster of emotions, from a disagreeable marriage to his siblings' engagement to very grave brain damage after he shot himself. Throughout melodramatic scenes, 
His acting echoed audience sentiment, making him a renowned TV actor and the heartthrob of television. Nonetheless, he couldn't help but embark on his journey to another world of primetime television and bid goodbye to his revered General Hospital after five years of his stay. Quitting the soap opera marked a new beginning on his road toward success, leading to a string of guest appearances on numerous exceptional shows. Anderson's broad performance spectrum stretched from the trucky humor in The Facts of Life to the wrenchingly true-to-life Today's FBI and the enjoyment of romantic escapades in The Love Boat. In 1982, Anderson made a stunning return to series television, anchoring the CBS adaption of Seven Brides for Seven Brothers as the dashing eldest brother Adam. Drawing inspiration from the renowned movie of the same name, the series displayed Anderson's charisma and charm. Yet it was his role as Lieutenant Simon Adams in the season of Emerald Point NAS that finally confirmed his legacy as a primetime stalwart. Paired on screen with the beautiful Susan Day, Anderson enthralled audiences with his portrayal of a hotshot naval pilot, negotiating the difficulties of life and love amidst the backdrop of a bustling naval air station. Amidst his television accomplishments, Anderson also made waves on the big screen, delivering a moving performance alongside Valerie Bertinelli in Ordinary Heroes. Originally intended as a feature film, the project was released instead as a television movie in 1986. In this poignant adaptation of the classic Pride of the Marines, Anderson plays a soldier coping with the effects of blindness, sustained just days before his homecoming from the furnace of Vietnam. His interpretation resonated with spectators, winning him critical acclaim and further confirming his image as a superb actor. Injuries in MacGyver Richard Anderson's television reputation is inextricably linked to his renowned portrayal of Angus MacGyver, the ingenious hero who captivated audiences across the world. From 1985 to 1992, Anderson personified the part of MacGyver with an infectious blend of optimism, resourcefulness, and steadfast resolve. He pushed the eponymous series to unprecedented success. Unlike the traditional action heroes who prefer to use guns, MacGyver goes out of the norm by simply carrying a Swiss army knife. Attracted by the character's serene mindset, which at that time was the exact opposite of the prevalent action genre's harsh lifestyle, Anderson took the chance to portray differing values. Likewise, the actor's view on firearms was close to the hero's. Anderson did not stop with mere entertainment. He also found a mirror that reflected his and other people's hope and courage. Anderson's casting as MacGyver was serendipitous, a chance encounter that would influence the course of his career. During his audition, Anderson's modest request to wear his glasses while reading the screenplay struck a chord with the show's producers, confirming their view that they had discovered the ideal embodiment of their humble hero. Thus started Anderson's seven-year journey as MacGyver, one distinguished by unprecedented success and enduring popularity. However, the path to stardom was not without hurdles. Anderson's dedication to authenticity drove him to do many of his own stunts on the show, resulting in a string of injuries that plagued him throughout the series' run. Anderson overcame physical challenges to bring MacGyver to life, including a compressed disc in his back and a severe sciatic issue, demonstrating his dedication and resilience as an actor. As MacGyver came to an end, Anderson began a new chapter in his career by forming Gecko Film Corp. with producer Michael Greenberg. Inspired by a chance encounter with a gecko while on vacation in Tahiti, Anderson imbued his production firm with the symbolism of the lucky lizard, embracing its spirit of persistence and good fortune. Anderson and Greenberg worked with Paramount Pictures to make two sequels to MacGyver, both of which received critical praise when they were released in 1994. Filmed in London, MacGyver, Lost Treasure of Atlantis, and MacGyver, Trail to Doomsday, demonstrated Anderson's varied talents as both a star and an executive producer, cementing his place as a Hollywood legend. Despite saying goodbye to the popular character of MacGyver, Anderson's profound influence on the world of entertainment lives on, a monument to his lasting reputation as a great actor and innovative producer. How Anderson Became an Air Force Brigadier General Richard Anderson's portrayal of Jack O'Neill in Stargate epitomizes the marriage of science fiction and military drama, 
garnering him recognition as one of television's most popular characters. Anderson's foray into interplanetary adventure began in 1997, when John Symes, president of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, invited him to join the developing television series. Stargate was a very captivating concept for Anderson. He dove into it, and he found out that he could make his character funny, but also profound, just like him. Unlike his predecessor, Kurt Russell, whose interpretation of the original movie was very sad, Anderson wanted to bring humor to Jack O'Neill, which in turn brought some humor into the usually lethal world of stellar traveling. Anderson made it evident from the start that he saw Stargate as an ensemble project, as opposed to the lone heroics that marked his prior role in MacGyver. Taking a collaborative approach, he campaigned for a lively ensemble of characters, each adding their own unique flavor to the narrative tapestry. This emphasis on camaraderie and teamwork not only improved the storytelling, but also built a sense of community among the cast and crew. Throughout his time on Stargate, Anderson's flair for improvisation gave Jack O'Neill an irreverent humor that endeared him to viewers worldwide. His rapid comments and caustic humor became trademarks of the character, providing a welcome break from the cosmic problems. Anderson's role in the series evolved in tandem with it. Anderson coordinated a strategic move for his character in the eighth season, electing to take on the role of base commander based on Don S. Davis's wise advice. This choice not only allowed Davis to retire gracefully, but it also allowed Anderson to reconcile his professional responsibilities with his duty as a parent, emphasizing quality time with his daughter. In the following season, Anderson bravely forsook his role as the show's main character and producer, choosing instead to appear as a guest star. This transition also provided an opportunity for new talent to come onto the stage. Anderson's efforts for Stargate were recognized not just by fans, but also by the U.S. Air Force. In 2004, during the Air Force Association's 57th Annual Air Force Anniversary Dinner, then Air Force Chief of Staff General John P. Jumper recognized Anderson for his portrayal of Jack O'Neill, as well as his work as executive producer. The series, which portrayed the Air Force positively, won Anderson the title of Honorary Air Force Brigadier General, demonstrating his influence on both entertainment and military culture. Family Life Richard Anderson's personal journey, though frequently veiled in secrecy, develops as an enthralling story of love, sacrifice, and the joys of parenthood. Despite never walking down the aisle, Anderson's romantic relationships with a number of high-profile women, including Deidre Hall, Sella Ward, Marley Matlin, Katarina Witt, Terry Hatcher, and Laura Flynn Boyle, have sparked interest over the years, providing insights into his mysterious personality. In 1996, fate intervened in the form of April Prose, lighting a spark that would forever alter Anderson's life. Their union grew into a love-filled partnership that culminated in the birth of their daughter, Wiley Quinn Anna Rose Anderson, on August 2, 1998. Wiley was born in Vancouver, giving tremendous joy and fulfillment to her loving parents. Fatherhood marked a watershed moment in Anderson's life. Longing for children, he embraced the adventure wholeheartedly, savoring every moment spent with his daughter. Despite the challenges of his expanding profession, Anderson was unwavering in his determination to balance his obligations as a father and an actor. As April and Wiley moved to Los Angeles, Anderson began a daily journey between LA and Vancouver, demonstrating his undying commitment to family. However, as time passed, Anderson reached a watershed moment, forced to confront the complex reality of his split loyalties. In 2004, he made the brave decision to prioritize his daughter above everything else, saying goodbye to his beloved position as Jack O'Neill after eight seasons on Stargate. Anderson bid a nostalgic farewell to the cottages that belonged to his dear family located in the lush woods of northern Minnesota. Choosing to start anew, he embarked on constructing his dream house in Malibu, California, where he could relax with Wiley and make unforgettable memories. Anderson accepted the challenge of single fatherhood with elegance and tenacity as he entered semi-retirement. In the quiet serenity of Malibu, he relished the joys of parenting Wiley, remembering each milestone and triumph as she grew into an exceptional young woman. Wiley inherited her father's passion for the stage, 
and displayed a tremendous talent for the performing arts from a young age. Encouraged by Anderson's unfailing support, she set out to chase her aspirations and carve her own way in the entertainment industry. As Anderson reflects on his journey, he is filled with pride for the beautiful young woman his daughter has become. They navigate life's twists and turns together, bonded by love and bolstered by everlasting commitment. Tragic Demise of Career The story of Richard Anderson's career takes a somber turn as he moves through a series of minor guest roles and brief appearances, indicating a tragic descent from his earlier heights. Since leaving the legendary role of Jack O'Neill in Stargate, Anderson's professional trajectory swung significantly south. He was no longer a leading personality on screen and made rare cameo appearances and starred in some forgettable commercials. Anderson, who was once acclaimed as a television legend, was forced to endorse products and businesses in a desperate attempt to stay alive in an industry that appears to have forgotten his past achievements. The stark reality of Anderson's fall became apparent in his scattered appearances on numerous television shows, each of which is a mere ghost of his previous fame. Anderson's formerly spectacular career was reduced to a run of insignificant appearances, ranging from quick cameos on Stargate Atlantis and Stargate Universe to forgettable gigs on Saturday Night Live. Even a brief return to his breakout role as Angus MacGyver in a MasterCard commercial during Super Bowl XL was a harsh reminder of his lost position. While the commercial tried to capitalize on nostalgia for MacGyver, it did little to hide Anderson's waning popularity. The announcement of a MacGyver film in production sparked anticipation for a revival. However, it was ultimately revealed to be fake. Despite Anderson's stated wish to repeat his renowned role, the film remained in development, leaving his hopes unfulfilled and his reputation damaged. Even Anderson's brief roles as General Jack O'Neill in Stargate Atlantis and Stargate Universe failed to capture the grandeur of his earlier achievements. Anderson's contributions to this series were a bittersweet reminder of what once was, contrasting sharply with his current anonymity. As his career came to a close, Anderson's creative activities brought no relief. Despite working as an executive producer on several films, including MacGyver, Lost Treasure of Atlantis, and Stargate, his behind-the-scenes accomplishments paled in contrast to his earlier on-screen triumphs. Even his artistic initiatives, such as penning the song Odileo for an episode of MacGyver, failed to reignite the spark of inventiveness that had previously defined his work. What is he doing now? Aside from the flash and glamour of Hollywood, he is a man of many hobbies and pursuits, each adding to the colorful mosaic of his life. Despite the demands of busy work, Anderson's wanderlust persists, fueled by a strong desire to travel. Whether crossing the sun-kissed coasts of the Mediterranean or exploring the cobblestone lanes of European cities steeped in history, he finds inspiration in the rich tapestry of cultures and landscapes that adorn our world. However, his love of adventure extends beyond terrestrial exploration, as he considers solitude and calm beneath the azure depths of the ocean, diving into the fascinating world of aquatic life with uncontrolled curiosity. Anderson, a devotee of the arts, has varied interests that range from the timeless masterpieces of the French Impressionists to the avant-garde works of current artists. He embraces the digital medium as a canvas for his creative creations, delving into the domain of digital creativity and creating elaborate records of color and form that capture the mind. His love for music reverberates throughout his soul, accompanied by the beautiful strains of classical masterpieces and the soulful improvisations of jazz. Anderson, a superb guitarist in his own right, moves his fingers effortlessly across the strings, channeling the spirit of musical icons like Leo Kotke and Steve Earle. Being an avid sports fan, he has an insatiable desire for adrenaline-fueled activities. From the thunderous clamor of a hockey stadium to the exciting rush of the ski slopes, he seizes any opportunity to explore his hobbies wholeheartedly. Anderson, one of the creators of the celebrity all-star hockey team, leverages the power of sports to make a difference by bringing sportsmen and celebrities together in friendly competition for humanitarian causes. His term as honorary captain of Team USA, the United States Olympic hockey team, demonstrates his undying commitment to the sport he loves 
as he serves as an ambassador for hockey on both national and international levels. Despite the passage of time and the growth of his interests, Anderson's passion for fast automobiles and motorcycles has remained strong. From the sleek contours of a Harley-Davidson Sportster to the adrenaline-pumping excitement of an Acura NSX, he has ridden the highways and byways of life with flair and grace. With the duties of fatherhood looming, Anderson's fleet of automobiles developed to meet the needs of his growing family, sacrificing speed for safety by purchasing family SUVs and Audi sedans. However, the lure of the open road remained strong, as proven by his 2006 purchase of a BMW R1200, which reignited his passion for motorcycle journeys along California's sun-drenched highways. Dog lover, Richard Dean Anderson's towering appearance, standing at six feet two inches, is only equaled by the depth of his love for his canine companions. Anderson's irresistible charisma extends beyond human interaction to include the devoted company of his beloved dogs. Anderson's world revolves around his everlasting love for dogs, whom he affectionately calls his favorite people. Whiskey, an Australian shepherd who remained a constant presence on the MacGyver set, was one of his favorite canine buddies. Whiskey, raised from a lively puppy to a wise and loyal companion, became an essential part of Anderson's life, providing company and unflinching loyalty until his death in 1989 at the extraordinary age of 13. After Whiskey left, Anderson found solace in Zoe, an Australian shepherd puppy who immediately became his best friend. They went on innumerable excursions together, forming a bond through shared experiences and unconditional affection. Zoe's presence on the set of Stargate brought joy and humor to Anderson's life, providing a source of solace despite the rigors of filmmaking. In 2008, as Anderson was settling into his new home, he met Andy, a vivacious female Australian shepherd puppy. Andy's enormous energy and excitement for life provided a renewed feeling of joy and vitality to Anderson's home, and her contagious enthusiasm brightened even the darkest of days. For Anderson, dogs are more than just pets. They are beloved members of the family, each adding their own distinct personality and charm to the vivid tapestry of his existence. Other canine companions have occasionally joined the fold, notably Daisy and Poppy, Anderson's mother's former dogs. Anderson accepts them as members of his pack and revels in the unconditional affection and camaraderie they bring, their presence a continual source of comfort and joy. As he navigates life's ups and downs, Anderson finds peace in his dog's undying loyalty and unlimited affection. Their presence serves as a reminder of life's simple pleasures and the enduring power of love, providing comfort and companionship at every bend of his incredible journey. More than just an actor. Richard Dean Anderson's humanitarian endeavors are as broad as the parts he has played on screen, demonstrating a deep commitment to making a good difference in the world around him. Over the years, he has supported a wide range of humanitarian projects, including youth empowerment, environmental protection, and healthcare programs. Anderson, a longtime advocate for youth development, has been affiliated with the Challengers Boys and Girls Club for decades, demonstrating his unwavering commitment to strengthening young minds. As a member of the Board of Trustees, he has helped shape the organization's objective of providing a safe haven for vulnerable youngsters while cultivating their abilities and ambitions for a brighter future. In 1995, Anderson received the Make-A-Wish Foundation's renowned Celebrity Award in appreciation of his unwavering devotion to granting the desires of terminally ill children. Through his continuous commitment to the Foundation, he has provided opportunities for innumerable young fans, allowing them to experience the joy of the entertainment industry firsthand. Anderson's charity efforts extend far beyond adolescent advocacy, including a wide range of causes near to his heart. As a strong supporter of the Multiple Sclerosis Society, he has used his voice and talents to raise awareness and cash for research into this painful neurological disorder. Similarly, his humanitarian spirit shines through in his support for organizations that help children with AIDS and other life-threatening conditions, demonstrating a strong desire to alleviate the suffering of society's most vulnerable people. Anderson has used the power of his celebrity platform to elevate the voices of causes he strongly supports. 
from fighting for gun violence prevention with the Center for the Prevention of Handgun Violence, to pushing literacy programs with Project Literacy US, he has utilized his public persona as a force for good, rallying support for subjects close to his heart. Anderson is a strong supporter of the Special Olympics, and his involvement goes beyond mere participation, as he has used his platform to raise awareness and inspire inclusivity on a global scale. His moving speech at the opening ceremonies of the 1991 Special Olympics demonstrates his persistent dedication to advocating for the rights and dignity of people with intellectual disabilities. In recent years, his attention has been shifted towards environmental protection and healthcare advocacy, which is an evident reflection of his significant worries for future generations. He took part in the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society and the Waterkeeper Alliance, founded by Robert F. Kennedy Jr., which confirms his persistent effort to protect vulnerable natural ecosystems and marine life for future generations. Anderson's personal connections have also fueled his support for medical research initiatives, such as the UCLA Foundation's Art of the Brain, which funds groundbreaking brain cancer research, and the USC Pain Center at the Keck School of Medicine, which focuses on developing treatments for chronic pain. Besides being a phenomenal actor, Richard Dean Anderson is an incredibly compassionate humanitarian who is determined to put an end to poverty not only in his country, but also in other countries of the world. His charitable legacy, which is centered on empowering the youth, safeguarding the environment, and medical research, will stay as a model of hope and inspiration to the next generation. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more exciting ones.